Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This video we're going to talk about the history of the HIV virus and how, and how it became a human disease and then how it spread around the globe. Uh, we'll cover uh, how the virus works and drugs to combat it in other videos. But uh, So let's go back to the 80s, 1981. I was alive, many of you are not, were not. Um, so in the U.S., we were seeing populations of people that happened to be young homosexual males, and we'll come back to that, that um, were, sh were getting diseases that only people that were severely immunocompromised would be getting. So pneumocystis, carinae pneumonia, Kaposi, sarcoma, cytomegalovirus infections. Like you were, you were seeing these seemingly healthy young men with just completely eradicated immune systems, and they and they didn't know what to think of it. So, um, so they started to they started to gather data, and they realized that it was in these these populations of young homosexual. Males. And, and the reason I bring this up is because the, the stigma that came with it. Obviously, the majority of people that have HIV infection are heterosexual, but at this time, this is where it showed up first. Um, so much so that for a while it was called gay-related immunodeficiency syndrome. So obviously, this is where some of this ter terrible stigma comes from. And then also, we'll talk later about this, this stigma, this, the idea of people having sex with animals being where the disease came from and, and that not being true. But um, So you can make an argument of why it showed up in this population first. I mean, anal receptive sex is the most the easiest way to transmit the disease, but certainly not the only way. All right. Um, so 1981, you're seeing these, these seemingly unhealthy men just with eradicated immune systems. And then 19, by 1983, they've already, already discovered the virus. So we now know the disease has been around a long time, but um, once they went to work um, trying to figure out what was going on, uh, 1983, they were able to discover that the virus that was destroying the immune systems uh, by destroying helper T cells were, is the HIV, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. So let's go ahead. Uh, so here you see the little green dots are HIV actually. But uh, so we now we now know, we quickly learned that this uh, the, the ancestor of this virus, SIV, simian immunodeficiency virus, had been around for a long time. So... Uh, and then sometime in the early 1900s, around 1908, it started to jump into the human population, which makes it a zoonosis, or some would say a zoonosis, an animal disease that can infect humans. So for who knows how long, SIV was a problem in simians, in, in chimps, but uh, it jumped into the human population in the early 1900s. So um, how? It, it appears from eating bushmeat. So again, it wasn't humans having sex with animals, even though it's you know looked at as a sexually transmitted disease now. It was the consumption of bushmeat. So eating these animals is how the virus got into the human population. At least that's the best guess. So we know it's been around for a long time, well over 100 years now. Um, they went back and they found frozen blood samples of children in the 50s and 60s that had it. Like I said, we know it's been around a lot longer than the 1980s, but that's when we, that's when we saw it. So um, is that how as far as how it spread? So it would have been in small populations. So imagine this is a really good example of a teaching moment for um, how diseases spread because HIV has been impacted by um, changes in sexual promiscuity. Uh, you know, maybe you look at them as culture, societal or cultural changes, but also the urbanization and the globalization of disease. So the, so if, if um, some people had this disease, but they lived in small, you know, small tribal villages and they only had one or maybe two sexual partners in their lives, this disease would have just kind of smoldered and been a relatively minor thing. But uh, so promiscuity certainly uh, played a big role. The more sexual partners someone has, the more time they they're rolling the dice to get any sexually transmitted infection. So promiscuity certainly played a role. Then you have urbanization. So now you take this one person um, let, that um, lived in this small village where they would have only had a handful of sexual partners. If that, they now move to a large city, you know, with several hundred thousand or more people in it. And let's say that person becomes a prostitute. So now you're looking at one infected person spreading it to more people in a day, potentially, than they would have in their entire life. So that's the urbanization of disease. When people live crowded together, sexually transmitted infection, Infections, uh, respiratory diseases, these are all going to become more common. And then also, then you have the globalization of disease. This was so as, as for the first person, person who was known to have died with AIDS was in the Congo in 1959. So it was, it was de it's definitely been a problem on the continent of Africa for a long time. But it wasn't until 1976 that a Norwegian sailor actually carried this disease um, around to the Western world. So then by the 80s, we started to see it in the United States. So, so as you can see, it spread around the globe because of the globalization of disease. It used to be people, people um, lived, in, you know, were born 
born and lived and died in the same place and didn't travel very much. But now, disease, you know, people and goods can carry diseases all around the globe. The world is a much smaller place. I have classrooms that have people that come from several continents and a dozen countries. Um, I could wake up today and, you know, he, here in South Dakota and be in, be in Australia tonight, right? Or in a day, anyways, 24 hours. So, so just think about how small the world has become. It's been so much easier to move diseases around. All right, so that's, um, that's just a real quick primer on where the disease came from, how it jumped into humans, and then how it spread around the globe. So we'll do a whole series of videos on HIV. So if you're interested, find the playlist that it's in, and um, I hope these help. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.